Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your host, Sandy Jacobson, and it's a great pleasure for me to welcome in the studio today Denny Tedesco, director, producer of the documentary The Wrecking Crew. Thank you very much. What was your inspiration to make this film? Well, what happened was in around 1995, my dad was diagnosed with uh, cancer, and I knew we knew it was terminal. And I thought, you know, if I don't record history, his and the rest of them is going to be gone. It's probably been a, a cathartic project for you, but also yeah. an evolutionary <clears throat> project. I don't think it's Absolute. something that could have been done in two weeks or three. No. Was a, I think it was the third screening that you did here in LA. Yeah, we had 1800 you had to people. add a second screening, like t you, oh, a second yeah, right, show, right, right, because right. you sold so many tickets. Yeah. And I actually invited a musician who he, he used to, he's written a lot of songs for Motown and things like that. And I've tried to get him on the show. He hasn't come on yet. But I had an extra you're ticket. Out, you're calling and him he out came. on the show right now. I know. I'm not mentioning names though, but mm. he, uh, I had an extra ticket and sent out a blurb to, you know, my Rolodex saying I have mm. an extra ticket. And he showed up and saw it. And when that film ended, he, he just, he was speechless, but he just went, wow. That's very cool. And, and I thought, wow, for him to be saying that, that, that it, told me how powerful the film was. You know, and it's hitting on different levels that I never thought would hit on. I think this movie should be seen by anyone who's a music student, whether they're yeah. studying classical music or they want to be in a rock band or anything, or yeah. if they just love the music from the 60s and the 70s, it, it's a must see. But yeah. definitely any kid who's sitting out there saying, oh, I want to be in a rock band when I grow up, this really is one of the best behind the scenes. I appreciate what that. What were some of your biggest challenges in the making of this movie? Um, I think the biggest challenge was just f not giving up. Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your guest host, Sandy Jacobson, and it is a great pleasure to welcome back John McEwen, one of the founding members of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. And John, we could—I know—we could spend two entire segments just listing your musical accomplishments. Oh, it, well, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> yeah, we'll look at Henry Mancini. I went out so. to see your son Jonathan and Scott Gates and Chelsea Williams the other night, mm -hmm. and I know—I think they did Acoustic Traveler. They did one of them. Oh my gosh! They did one of your songs off of one of the CDs Aww. that I have, and I just got goosebumps. What do you feel has contributed? to your sustained success? Uh, to me, success is being able to do what you like. We had a, a duo on the show one day, and and their songs were climbing up the college charts. And their album had been started like 30 years ago, hmm. and the record company went bankrupt and whatever, and, and they had just gotten their music back. And they started touring this record. And it was climbing up the college charts, and, and they were kind of laughing, and they said, well, do you think the college kids know how old we really are? <laughs> <laughs> the record crowd at the New Mexico State Fair, 9,200 paid admissions. What a night. And the next night we're in El Paso at a, some, some uh, little baseball field. And I'm going, man, Albuquerque was great. El Paso, baseball, that's good. The place good. You know what 130 people look like on a baseball <laughs> field? Oh. Lonely. <laughs> I think there was more crew than there were audience. Uh. But, but that's how it, it goes. You you can't predict. Well, it didn't go it. that way for Garth Brooks. But well, no, but that's why that's what keeps it interesting. What are yeah. some of the realities or challenges of touring that you know you feel exist, and what do you think it takes to successfully survive a tour? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you have to love what you're doing. Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your host Sandy Jacobson, and it's a great pleasure for me to welcome. Pat Town and Michael Franco, who are producing a the world premiere of Frank Zappa's Joe's Garage. How did did you guys know that? Nice work, True. Nice well, work. well done. <laughs> I love Zappa, man. He's great. It's awesome. How did this come about? Uh, well, I had uh, heard the album when I was in college a uh, long time ago, and. Uh, it existed as a pipe dream of mine for many, many, many Welcome years. Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your guest host, Sandy Jacobson, and it's a great pleasure for me to welcome our guest tonight, Nathan McEwen, Chuck Hales, and Elaine Gregston. Were there any particular influences, musical in influences that any of you had? A lot of the newer artists that are starting to come out, but if you if you look at those artists, um, they are they pride themselves in playing the song. 
<laughs> well, well, there seems to be, I know, especially like with, with your age group and younger, that seems to be the trend. People are, you know, kid, kids, I'll say, yeah. um, not to offend you, but <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> are like, you know, gravitating more back to the roots of mm -hmm. Yeah, they can tell the music. difference if it's being played or not. Yeah, and that's what's so yeah. exciting As musicians, for me. what do you feel have been your biggest personal and or professional challenges? For me, it's just trying to stay inspired. Your lyrics are very inspiring. <laughs> they're, I, I find them, for someone as young as you, they're, they're very insightful. I know in Grand Design, it's not a funny song, but you have a wry or dry Cynical, humor, cyn yeah. cynical, uh, <laughs> you know, approach to the song that just is. Fun there are p points where I do have to laugh, but c but it's very real and genuine. I was playing festival for a friend of mine this last week, mm -hmm. and he described um, "Beautiful Night" as exotically passionate. Oh wow! And I thought, wow, I like that. But if if any of you could just sit and jam with anyone, past or present, um, who would you most want to? do that with? Probably Mozart. Oh, I'll nice. have my people, you can talk to your people. Okay, I'll great. Set it up. <laughs> Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your guest host, Sandy Jacobson, and it's a great pleasure to welcome our guest, Florence Hardigan. How and when did you make the transition from violin prodigy to guitar singer-songwriter? These friends of mine introduced me to Joan Baez and, and Bob Dylan and, and Joni Mitchell, and I I'd never heard it before. I know that producing a show, particularly a live show, is no small undertaking. <laughs> How did you get the support you needed to do this project? I roped in every single person that <laughs> I could possibly pull a favor from. You've accomplished so much already at such a young age. Are there any one or two things that you believe have helped you achieve these goals? I think as soon as you realize that it's not impossible, then it isn't. Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your guest host today, Sandy Jacobson. And it's a great pleasure for me to welcome our guest Bob Stain, who was founder of the Ice House and currently is the owner of the Coffee Gallery backstage. And the Ice House was considered one of the top folk venues in America. Tell us a little about those early days. Oh, those were wonderful years. Those were the days that I say that the stars fell on the Ice House. We just had everybody come by and either play for us uh, that were well known or audition for us. I know John McEwen from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band said that you gave, he t will tell the story that you p gave him his he, first paid that's, gig. That's what he said. <laughs> Today, you own the coffee gallery backstage in Altadena and you continue to bring world class music to. An I intimate do. venue. I do. Sometimes it's the same music, as a matter of fact, as I had at the Ice House and the same customer. I first came to your venue on February 10th, 2001, and Peter That's, Tork and uh, yeah. James Lee Stanley were playing that night. Right. And Peter Tork was someone that I had wanted to see perform my entire life since I was six. And so that was a special night for This him. was the first time you ever saw him? That was the first time oh, I saw him, good. and it was the first time I came to the coffee gallery. Very good. When I walked in there, I felt like I'd stepped back and was getting to experience the 60s. It, and, yes. And I it was, was so thrilled. I read a piece that you wrote called Bob's Rant. Oh, and oh, in yes. there, yes. It, it, th that was directed at musicians who send you submissions to yeah. for the op opportunity of possibly performing at the coffee gallery. But what you had to say in there was j was great. I ha you said it better than anyone I've ever read or seen so far. Share some of that input. Well, <laughs> the rant, of course, because I'm very blunt. I, I, I'm kind, but I'm blunt. And um, the rant points out everything one should do and shouldn't do to at least get a foothold in the entertainment business. I can come out to the coffee gallery if I'm like, well, there's nothing going on. What can I do tonight? I know I can show up. And no matter who you've booked, I'm going to have a great time and hear some great music and watch great music happening and be part of it. Welcome to Backstage Los Angeles. I'm your guest host, Sandy Jacobson, and it's a great pleasure to welcome our guest today, Evan Marshall, accomplished mandolinist, described by the late Chet Atkins as one of the few great musicians of our time. What do you feel have been some of your biggest personal and or professional challenges? At one point, I wanted to uh, market myself as a solo mandolinist. You need to come up with a theme song, and this theme song will be the thing when people see it and hear it, they'll go, oh, that's Evan Marshall, the mandolinist. 
hey, wait a second, it might work.